I think I hit him in the ear. Everybody, welcome back to Half Ass. As always, I'm joined by Andrew, and today <laughs> we have a fun one. Um, this has been on the whiteboard of topics for at least two months, if not a little bit longer. Quite a while. And it's just ironic timing. It's very ironic timing because we're going to be talking about 300 Blackout, why it's so awesome, and Century Elimination. Yeah, the original title that we wrote on our whiteboard was uh, Assassin Rifle. Just just for fun and clickiness, right? Right. But it felt a little weird to make a video all about assassination. Especially after this last weekend. Especially after last weekend. So yeah. before we dive deeply into that, Cautiously, <laughs> we have our giveaway going on, boys and girls. We are really close to hitting our 2,500 sub goal. When we hit 2,500 subs, we're going to pick one lucky subscriber, take home 500 rounds of Winchester Brass Case 9mm, shipped directly to you. So, like, follow, comment, subscribe. Subscribe is the most important, but we also like getting engaged in some of the conversations with you guys. So, please, if you have questions, comments, bitches, grabs, complaints, put them in the comments and we'll answer them. So, we'll get that out of the way real quick. I've been talking about this for a few videos now, how I'm super excited for our next giveaway. This one is going to be awesome. It is currently in this box right here. Any guesses to what this is, put them in the comments below. Um, but when we hit the 2,500 subs, we will unveil what this guy is. It is a pistol, so we are doing some fun stuff with some fun giveaways, but this is a very rare and very expensive pistol that we will be shipping to somebody who is allowed to own it. Uh, when we hit our next sub goal, but get us a 2500, then this is up next. All right, kick us off on 300 Blackout. Let's start with let's start with what 300 Blackout is real quick for the boys and girls at home that may not know what that is, other than seeing okay. the yeah, yeah. game. So S short, short, short summary of what 300 Blackout is. Um, for the longest time in war fighting, we had the M16 and the M4. And then on the exact opposite side of the spectrum, we had the MP5. Everybody loved how short and compact and suppressible and how low signature the MP5 was. But the MP5 lacked the power of an actual rifle because it was a pistol round. So the challenge became to find a middle ground where we could get a very small, very low signature, very compact rifle that was still powerful enough to have to be able to be classified as rifle style power and that's where we ended up coming up with the 300 blackout so 300 blackout ars which we saw an explosion of a few years ago everybody wanted one they're typically somewhere between six to nine inches in barrel length very similar to what you would see in an mp5 they typically shoot a wide variety of types of ammo just like you would see in those pistol calibers and they are very low signature, very easy to suppress, very quiet, very little flash, and a lot of fun. Very great for backpack guns or for bag deployment or any kind of like bug out bag or anything like that. So a 300 Blackout essentially is is a 30 caliber bullet stuffed into a 5.56 case. Yep. It is so fat that it almost looks like a straight wall bullet. Kind of, <laughs> sort of, yeah. yeah. Essentially, they uh, they had to make the bullet bigger because as they tried to shorten the barrels with 5.56s, they had to spin the bullet so fast to get it to stabilize that it disintegrated. And they figured out that if you make the bullet bigger, the bullets can spin faster and not fall apart. Mm -hmm. So they ended up just taking a 5.56 casing and slapping a 308 round in it. Yeah, we're not going to get too far into the nitty gritty into the, into the science behind 300 Blackout, into the design of the 300 Blackout. It exists, it's commercially available, it's awesome. Military law enforcement departments around the country and around the world use the cartridge because oh, yeah. 30 caliber bullet that suppresses awesome with subs that runs like a sewing machine in short barrels and reduces your signature. We don't need to get into the depths of the internet and having all these goddamn trolls correct us on right. well, actually. Well, actually. Yeah, no. It's just an awesome, badass cartridge. And what is the use case for right. it? And that's the theme of so many of our videos is use case. I think originally with all of 300 Blackout's popularity, what happened was is People flocked to the gun stores because they wanted a tiny AR 
they wanted to take advantage of the pistol brace stuff and they wanted to make their AR pistol with their 300 blackout because they just wanted something small. But, you know, that's not really a valid use case. No. And now one of the kind of shifts in trend that we're seeing is so many more people buying things like bolt action 300 blackouts or even break action 300 blackouts which are starting to become super popular well and let's real quick talk about why with 300 blackout right so you have a cartridge coming out hitting the baffles which has depending on their can volume whether it's a lot of volume a little volume how it reduces your signature so on we'll get into that a little bit down the road but when you can close the breach on yeah. the bolt action even in a 223 or a 556 five, anything when you can close that breach you eliminate a lot of sound that you would have and you're pushing it all into the can yep you don't have a lot of that sound escaping out through the action when it cycles and the action itself is mechanically quieter yes so a lot of people started realizing after that kind of fad phase of 300 blackout wore off that what this really great use case is for this round is we don't want to call it the assassin rifle. Oh my god. Yeah. But it's, we will call it sentry elimination. Yeah, so for those out there questioning what's the what's the distance that you can shoot a 300 blackout? Well, first and foremost, you've got two main categories. You have supersonic rounds, somewhere in the realm of 120 grain bullet-ish, yep. plus or minus 10 to 15. Sure. And then a subsonic bullet over 200. Like the, super, the subs that I shoot are 220s. The, I've, I've shot some 190s before, but yeah, they're generally big bullets. Yeah, so big heavy bullet that goes real slow and real quiet. Subs, you could effectively shoot a couple hundred yards. Mm -hmm. uh, supers, I've taken shots, and I'll put it, if I can find the video, I'll clip it in here, with my pork sword, which is one of the weapons that we were using to sh demonstrate 300 black out of the range. Uh, I've taken 500-yard shots that hit C-Zone IPSC targets rel reliably, Four out of five times right. uh, at Briar with Mark from uh, Delta 34, also on YouTube. And and a lot of people might hear us say something like this, like maybe a couple hundred yards to 500 yards. A lot of people might hear that and think, well, that's that's stupid. My M16, I can hit a guy at 800 yards. Yes, that's true. But your M16 is very loud and it's very big. Yeah. That little bolt action up there can fit in a, in a child's backpack. Yeah, a little Jansport backpack. Yeah, a yeah. little Jansport backpack would fit that gun with a six-inch barrel. Should I get that off the wall and put it on the table? Uh, maybe. Let's get it off. Yeah, it would fit on the table nice. Safety first. There you go. But, so, yeah, fold it up with the suppressor removed. This gun would fit in a tiny little backpack or even very easily be strapped to the side of like a hiking pack if you were out on like a patrol or a movement or something like that. And for all the nerds out there, this is an SBR. It just has a brace on it because that's what I had laying around. But there she is in all of her glory. Oh, right. Six inches of fury. And you can get ARs that you can build that are relatively the same size as this. SIG makes uh, MCX. That's They actually make one for the military that's a roughly the same size as this. I think they call it the uh, the low visibility weapon system or something. It's the same concept. We're talking about a, a weapon platform that has so little detectable signature that packs kind of a punch. Out to about 200 yards with a subsonic round, this thing is going to be crazy accurate and it's going to impact with relatively the same force as like a police officer's issued carry 9 mil. At point blank. At point blank range. So think about if you had the ability to hit somebody with your service pistol at 200 yards quietly. With pretty much zero signature. With, yes, that is that is crazy scary on a modern battlefield situation. What I love about this thing, so this is my pork sword, a gun that was designed years ago. It is a 700 action, 6-inch, 300 blackout barrel with a chemo system on it. Um, the can is actually... Longer than the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> so, high volume is can. I've run this with, uh, well, you'll see in the video when we clip to the range. We put a K can on it. Uh, mm -hmm. it I put a Sam NS on this before. This is the Dead Air Primal 46 um, with the chemo setup on it. So, But this gun specifically, I've shot at Briar Rabbit and I have shot 200 yard targets with subs, rel religiously with reduced C zone type mm -hmm. Ipsic steel targets, and then 500 yards with supers. 
The gun's super accurate, super reliable, and from 200 yards with a sub, nobody's going to know where you're at, period. There is no signature. There is no noise at that point with subs. This is like shooting a mortar tube. You just go thump. Right. And my kind of approach to 300 Blackout is the exact opposite of this gun. I carry around a little folding AR in a backpack because my whole... Throwback to the backpack video. Th- yeah, throwback to the backpack video. If you guys haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. My whole concept of where I really like 300 Blackout is for low signature CQB. I want to be able to go in, clear a building in an urban environment, or do something in an urban setting. And people, because an urban area is going to have a lot more people density, they're not going to really understand what's going on. They're going to hear thump, thump, thump. They're not going to hear that loud crack, crack, like there's the gunshots right there. They're not going to know really quite what's going on. Well, if we learned anything from this weekend, you've got about 28 minutes <laughs> before anybody could detect you anyway. So, yeah, yeah, we're not going to dive into that. Like, there's everybody on the Internet's already doing their two cents on those videos. But Jesus, Jesus Christ. My favorite was the uh, the Lion King meme, like the Secret Service agent, like. We protect everything the light touches. What about that slightly sloped roof over there? We don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we shot some of the stuff from the range. The fun part about this is th- this gun is ridiculously expensive. I built this thing years ago for a purpose. I went high with everything. Um, this is not your everyday, every man's. This was literally stupid purchase of mine. This is the, I call this the dumbest gun that I own. But to get into shooting... 300 blackout bolt guns that suppress really well and everything else. There's tons of options. Oh, right? yeah. So my favorite, and we'll see it in the video too. Now, the one in the video has been upgraded since then, but the Ruger American. The, yeah, the Ruger American Ranch Rifle mm-hmm. is by far the most popular one we sell here in the store. I own one. Quite a few of our employees own one. They are... I don't because... Uh, right, because of this. They're beautifully made. Ruger does a great job with them. They're threaded from the factory. They're extremely affordable. And they have tons of aftermarket support. There's Timney triggers, Trigger Tech mm-hmm. triggers, great chassis systems. So yeah, the Magpul chassis that uses the standard Stanag mags. Yep. They're great. I mean, yeah, they super take, affordable. They take AR-15 magazines mm-hmm. for a bolt-action rifle. They're, and they already come with a rail, so you can put a scope right on it, right out of the box. They're a great gun. If you're the kind of person who's looking for getting rid of that groundhog in the backyard, maybe going on the odd hog hunt or dealing with a varmint situation, and... You don't want to piss off all the neighbors, or you just want to be able to really enjoy some quiet time with your rifle. But let's go ahead and move into the range. Yep, so we're going to go out to the range. We're going to show you guys shooting these, some variety of rounds, some variety of suppressors, and kind of give you a gauge of uh, what we were doing out there with them and how quickly we were able to get nice, quiet shots. Yep, so we'll catch a few. So we're out at the range talking about 300 blackout today. Now, 300 Blackout saw an explosion in popularity a few years ago, mainly because everybody kept trying to go shorter and shorter and shorter with the AR-15. And for that use case, it is perfect. It's a great platform to go to a 6 to a 9-inch AR and really enjoy it. You've seen us shooting our PDWs here on the channel before. We have a lot of fun with them, and they're great for suppression. But one of the things that people don't often talk about enough with 300 Blackout is how amazing it performs in the bolt action, bolt action category. Woo. So right here, we have a gun called the Fork Sword. This is a, a sweet little uh, firearm made by Black Collar. There's a couple other companies that make them too. And these are little miniature, packable little bolt action guns that are capable of putting out an absolute punch at packing up into incredibly small spaces. Really great if you needed to strap something to the side of a pack or get it into a bag and carry it around as a force multiplier, something like that. And even though this is a really cool example and a really cool custom gun that it is obviously not super accessible to everybody, one of the most popular 300 blackouts that we do is the Ruger American series as well. These Ruger Americans are really, really cool. You get amazing performance out of it for a very affordable rifle, and it's very easy to take something like this out to the range, slap a suppressor on it, and have a great time. Now, we always talk about use case out here. What is the practical use of something like a 300 Blackout? Obviously, everybody knows with that AR, you're going to be nice and quiet, that PDW, that CQB style firearm. But with something like these, these are 
perfect for very silent, very accurate, closer engagement target elimination. So if I had something I had to take out that was only maybe 150, 200 yards away, and I needed to do it very accurately, I could do that with something like this with virtually no signature, very quiet and quite effective. A basic 300 blackout round, even at that distance, is still going to be impacting with the full force of what a 9mm would be at about point blank. So we're going to get out here, we're going to do a couple shots, do a couple drills. We're going to kind of show you what we like to do with these platforms and how they work. Now we're at relatively close range here and we're in an indoor range, but you can already tell that this gun is crazy quiet. Now this is a full 16 inch barrel gun, 300 blackout, it burns out way before 16 inches. So you're not going to have any of that big blast coming out of the muzzle, even if you don't have a suppressor, but with any kind of suppressor on there, whether it be a nice full size can like this one, or even if you grab maybe a, a smaller like K size can, you're still going to eliminate virtually most of that noise and the loudest part of the gun is going to be that action operating okay so we saw here even with a cheaper more relatively entry-level bolt gun i was able to get a ton of great hits on target a lot of really great hits all right there in the a zone at a relatively close range and these are impacting with great force to them not quite the same force that you'd see out of a 556 but with a 300 blackout you're still getting enough stopping power to actually put a hurting on something. All right, so we saw the full size bolt action. Now let's check out this pork sword a little bit. So right here, we have about an 18 inch gun. This is really small, super easy to fit in a tiny little backpack, maybe even a briefcase, depending on what kind of environment you're walking around in. We're gonna show you kind of the difference of what we can actually achieve with something like this based on the ammo and the type of suppressor that we're gonna be using. So this first shot I'm going to take is going to be a supersonic out of this six inch barrel with a muzzle blast. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a little bit more violent. And then we're going to switch to some subs shooting out of a small suppressor and a large suppressor. Sure. So much, much louder than the 16 inch that we were shooting just a moment ago. We're gonna go ahead and put on a K can. Now, a lot of people have this idea that you need a really big suppressor to be able to get any kind of suppression out of it. Virtually any suppressor, even a tiny one like this is gonna be drastically different than what you just saw with that unsuppressed shot. So a lot quieter on that shot. However, we did still have some muzzle flash. Now the 300 blackout is still burning up here. So we're still going to get some of that flash escaping out of a tiny little can. But I suspect when we move to the big suppressor, not only are we going to get quieter because we have more volume, but we're also going to catch most of that flash in this guy. So our signature reduction is going to be even less. We're using the dead air chemo system with all these suppressors that we use out here at the range, just because having all of our guns set up with the exact same system means that we can swap everything between all of our guns.
And that was a night and day difference. There was no visible flash that came out of the end of the gun. The recoil was so much more reduced. The noise was so much more reduced. And that was the exact same type of round that we fired previously. Let's give that one one more. Yeah. Super smooth. Super quiet. Wouldn't even need ear protection, even in an indoor range to shoot that. If you were to shoot this outdoors at some sort of target you were trying to hit with this type of setup, I imagine that anything more than 50 or 60 yards away from you in an outdoor environment, they'd have no idea that they were even hearing a gun go off. All right, so you guys just saw Andrew taking some shots with a few different platforms in 300 Blackout. My pork sword, his AR, and then also one of those Ruger American ranches. It's had some work done to it. Chassis, can, bunch of other stuff. What you will see as a common denominator for most folks is 300 Blackout pretty much needs a can. It doesn't need it, but what's the point of having a 300 Blackout to reduce your signature, reduce your sound without a suppressor? Right. That's what it was designed to do, and we were shooting it in the capacity for which it's meant and having a lot of fun with it. So we joked in the top of the video about how this is a century elimination, whatever else. The biggest use case for 300 Blackout, at least for us in Central Ohio, is for varmints and things like that. Sure. But these rifles make a great coyote gun. Other types of uh, varmints that are out there as well. Groundhogs, I mean, groundhogs, you 22, 223, but something about at night with a suppressed 300 Blackout is going thunk. Yeah. <laughs> they work great. From what... I've spoken to a lot of people about who have used it in a much more practical uh, scenario. The largest thing you ever really want to kill with a 300 blackout is usually something about the size of a human because um, that's what it's designed for. I've heard of a lot of places, especially in Texas, that are actually starting to not allow it for deer hunting because it's it's kind of lacking in the world of like taking down medium game. But if you're the kind of guy who's going out there and wants to do some nighttime coyote hunting and you don't want to wake up the entire neighborhood with your 30 out 6 or, you know, you don't want to have any flash with your night vision or anything like that, 300 Blackout is an amazing choice for that kind of application. And we don't see it a lot here in Ohio, but I know feral hogs are a big problem, especially yep. down south. 300 Blackout's a great cartridge for feral hogs, depending on the size. But we have not had them migrate this far north in the packs that they have down south yet yeah we are seeing them a little bit here and there but a 300 blackout's a great feral hog gun too oh yeah it's really really popular for hog guys it'll it'll put a definite definite whopping on something yeah for sure i mean you're still shooting a 30 cal bullet so yeah it still has a lot of impact energy and again we're not going to go too far into the nitty-gritty on the science behind the bullet if you're interested in that stuff the internet exists for a reason uh the cartridge is awesome it hits hard it suppresses well reduces your signature just all around really nice and like you talked about in the video a little bit on the range, you do have a little bit more recoil because you are pushing a yeah. fat bullet out of a short barrel. That's a, that's something that uh, almost everybody I've ever worked with who's built a 300 blackout has been really surprised about when they finished out their gun and went out and started shooting is that the recoil impulse is so drastically different than a 5.56. Five, it, it feels more similar to like an AK or maybe even some kind of AR-10 because, you know, equal opposite reaction. It's a big heavy bullet you're still pushing a 30 cal bullet yeah it's a big heavy bullet and it's going to produce more oomph more recoil typically you're shooting suppressed so you're getting a lot more blowback a lot more back pressure so and a lot of times it's going to be gassy it's going to be pretty gassy especially in those sig mcx platforms those things might make you cough a little bit when yeah. you shoot them so that's why i like three and black on a bull gun because you can also do the whole it's so well, the action to watch the smoke come out the end. It's awesome. It is perfect in a bolt gun. The break actions are great. I've I've had a lot of fun with 300 Blackout ever since kind of going further away from the ARs and going more into the more mechanical action guns. It's I'm having a lot of fun with it now. All right, boys and girls, thanks for taking the time to listen to us ramble on. Again, we have our giveaway going on. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll give away 500 rounds of brass case 9mm when we get there. We are really, really, really close, which I am super excited for. Because we want to keep doing this. We want to keep doing good content. We want to keep, you know, growing the channel organically. I mean, we're not paying anybody to get sub subscribers and supporters. We just want to put out good content. And we know you're going to call us on it if it's shit content. So, But we appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. And we'll catch you next week.